You, young man or woman, have stumbled on a very shady part of the internet. I am a guy who talks about making $4 million per year by running you through everything that I'm doing in my business playbook. You are not going to get this sort of information in as unpolished and crappy a form anywhere else, I can assure you. Welcome to my daily updates. So, the way I do these videos every day is I start them with some YouTube comment Q&A, and that's just where I answer questions from people that are watching my content like you uh, that you can leave on any one of my videos at any time. Then I do building and strategizing in public before finally showing you guys my growth stats on YouTube, Instagram, and my products. Check this out. This is my main channel. If you've never heard of me, I run another one that's almost at 190k subs now, and boy, do I have a lot to talk about for that. And then this is my daily updates channel. Uh, you know how I said I start with the Q&A? Well, I'm not here to waste your freaking time. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of this puppy and start answering questions. Then after I'm done answering those questions, you guys are going to see what I'm doing and how I'm making all this money. Isn't that fun? I need a money printer like that Jerome Powell meme. Um, Simone says, is another podcast with Matthew Larson in the making? Yes. Hey, Nick, I used to provide meta ads with a landing page for mortgage professionals. I've been doing email marketing for a while now and have generated 15 opportunities with a reply rate of 2%. Nice. Got a one sales call and it went south, of course. I wanted to ask if this is normal or if I'm doing something wrong. It's been three months now and I haven't landed a single client yet. Can you recommend any lead gen methods other than Upwork as I am 17? Well, I think we can just cut to the <laughs> end of this thing. You jumped on one sales call and you didn't land a client. So your main issue is you need more sales calls. Probability of you getting your first client from your first sales call is very low. I had something like probably over 60 or 70 meetings when I was in your shoes and I was going door to door and knocking on 2000 businesses uh, a month. So no, you are not necessarily, I mean, you probably are doing a lot wrong. Okay. Let's be clear. Like you ask, am I doing something wrong? Boy, holy crap. Are you probably doing a ton wrong? But the number one thing that you are doing wrong is probably you're just not uh, pushing enough volume. And the second you start pushing enough volume to the top of your stack in any sort of lead generation scenario, things start working themselves out. Why? Because the human brain is a remarkable organism and you will naturally learn if you're put in front of stimulus, uh, uh with some sort of reward and some sort of punishment. So you know, let's just run through this top to bottom reply rate of 2%. That's not terrible. That means one in 50 emails gives you a reply. Okay. Let's hypothetically say that, um, your positive reply rate to this is 50%, which is kind of a very, very strong assumption for me, considering that you're at the start line. Um, that would mean that your total positive reply rate or your meeting booking rate be 1%, which means you would have to send 100 times 15 or 1,500 emails over the course of three months in order to land that that's 500 emails a month or mathematically 16 or 17 emails a day. That's not very much at all. Um, so yeah, man, if you 10 X the volume, I guarantee you're going to 10 X the results minimum. All right. So a uh, great video, Nick, what do you think about sending customized loom videos for cold emails instead of personalized text? The video is like a template and you can customize the, Hey, first name or whatever, using an AI voiceover. The only downside is it costs about 50 bucks per 200 videos. Is it worth it? What do you think? You know, I actually did this exact same thing using a service called be human a while ago. I don't know if you've, uh, if you've heard of these. But be human, and I'm not affiliated with them at all. To be honest, I don't use their service anymore. I don't even know if they're still around. But it was a pretty cool service. You could um, basically record a video, and in the video say name. And then uh, the AI would find that point in the video where you say name, and then it would like blur over your mouth, and then it would use a training sample of your voice to say the person's name. So I'd go, hey, name, really cool seeing you. Thought I'd record a quick video just recording, you know, just putting this in front of you and seeing if, you know, you could get some value out of it, whatever. And then it would go like, hey, Peter. Now, the issue at the time was that the models were not very good at uh, distorting your face. And so the hack here, SLM10 New York, whether or not, you know, this is the, an issue, but the hack for me was I would grab uh, the Loom video recording bubble or the equivalent, and I'd say, hey, Peter. And so while the thing was moving, you know, you can't actually see my face because it's just moving so fast. And then if somebody like paused on the Peter part to double check, is that shit real or whatever, then I'd be halfway between some transitions. They wouldn't actually know. Some of the uh, best sales campaigns, I want to say, uh, best uh, Legion campaigns, cold email campaigns, a couple of years ago, were using this all the time. And a lot of them flew completely under the radar. You would create and record this video and give total plausible deniability and make it seem like it was super customized. And then you would freaking pass that shit through be human and it would crush. So yeah, can you do this for sure? 50 bucks for 200 videos is bonkers. There have to, there has to be better solutions, man. And I want you to know that there are models out there. Like if you are a crazy hacker nerd and you want to put together your own pipeline, you could put together your own pipeline and actually do all of this for probably like five cents per 200 videos. You would have to rent a server on um, a service like 
uh, I don't know, like run pod or something like that. Okay. Rent GPUs by the minute, essentially. Then you'd have to run like that, um, you know, video name change model or something like that. I mean, you know, like there's a, I mean, there were a variety of AI personalized uh, models out there, and I don't know, you're going to have to find the, the model. I forget the name of it, but just figure out whatever Behemoth's using, then use that. Uh, and then you have to run it on that, and then you just have to pass the videos and kind of treat it like an API endpoint. And then you could you could do it for like five cents per 200 videos, easy. So yeah, I'm not going to discourage you. Um, what are your thoughts about using an AI email autoresponder to respond instantly to all interested replies? Sometimes you're sleeping, and you mention it's best to reply within five minutes. I don't think this is a good usage of, uh, of resources, to be honest, unless you are always sleeping. <laughs> like... Sure, if the alternative is not responding at all or responding after five hours for sure, but if the alternative is you actually just getting the notification, responding yourself, then you should do that. Like, dude, there's nothing more valuable in life or in business than leads. Leads that respond positively to some sort of cold email offer are literally like money, or at least they're very translatable to money. It's like uh, currency conversion. Okay, they're like Swedish francs or whatever, and you need to convert them into US dollars. They're very, very close to US dollars. All you need to do is just respond yourself. So when you have this gift horse, don't look it in the mouth, you know, like start, just, just take it and then respond to it. Okay. What advice would you give to someone that wants to grow a school community and also run an automation business? Should I focus on one at a time? Well, this is pretty funny, KJ, because you probably just didn't wake up one morning and you're like, you know what I want to do with my life? Run a school community and an automation agency. <laughs> yeah. Like I, <laughs> I don't think you woke up one day and you're like, you know, the purpose of my life is to run a school community and an automation business. I think realistically, this is you looking for a means to an end. So I would ask my advice to you would be, what is the end that you are thinking that running a school community and automation business would help you achieve? In my case, uh, I make a fuck ton of money with this stuff. So obviously I can see that end that you want being money, in which case I can understand why you might want to do that. But, uh, you know, there was like some 17 year old or something, what, like last week that said he wanted to make $100 million, was it? $100 million in 10 years. And first of all, I was like, so how much money? Is it like uh, $100 million in revenue? $100 million in profit? Is it $100 million in your bank account? Is it $100 million in your like business, commercial, or is it like private bank account? Like, like tell me about it. And then another one was like, how can you be sure that you're going to want the same things in 10 years that you're going to want today? Like, it would be very naive of you to assume that you are going to want the exact same things now that you did, you know? That, that you did 10 years ago. I want very different things ten uh, now versus 10 years ago. So I think you just have to be a little bit like mature about that and like recognize that you are a changing organism whose values and goals are going to shift. AI Wealthwave says, thanks for your videos. Thank you. Hey, Nick, I really like your content and your work. Keep pushing. Would you recommend me selling an AI system to wellness centers that welcomes new customers, confirms bookings, and sends reminders to the client all by email? If so, should I use cold emails to get leads considering the emails are generally opened by receptionists and not the business owner? Thanks and have a nice day. Two main things here. Number one, anytime you're dealing with like brick and mortar, wellness, uh, uh, I don't know, dentist, whatever, double up on SMS too, because you're dealing with consumers and consumers are very, very unlikely to actually like constantly be looking at their email. Okay. That's number one. So anytime you're sending an email, always double up with an SMS, get a bunch of Twilio numbers. You're going to do some ATP verification order. You're going to have to add some disclaimer to the form when you collect their numbers, but that's okay. Numbers are gold and you'll find much higher conversion rates across any future campaigns through SMS than you will through numbers on B2C. The second thing is just get the emails of the business owner. The cool thing about cold email is you could just find the emails of the business owners, not the receptionist. One of the issues with cold calling, which is what I used to do, or uh, literally like visiting businesses is, you know, who is at the front desk, the receptionist. So in order to like go and do anything, most of the time through serendipity, you either have to have the person like that happens to be at the front desk at the time that you're in the business, or you have to call and then bullshit your way through the receptionist using like total bullshit. Hey, yeah, I'm uh, calling on behalf of a vendor supplier request for blah, 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 blah. And it's like, what the hell is a vendor supplier request? I don't know. The receptionist doesn't know either. So they think you're legit and then they move you forward, right? Like you're going to have, you have to do that. Um, one of my big reasons why I don't do cold email is of like a hundred minutes on a call. It's like hundred minutes calling. How many of those minutes are you actually talking to a decision maker? Cause you got to deal with shit like that. Well, that's actually why I prefer cold email. Cause you can just cut through them, right? Like business owners have their own personal emails. They don't just use the same email as the freaking receptionist. So Yeah. Thank you for providing so much value. Thank you. Thank you. Follow-up question regarding copy. We can use AI to write copy letters now, but isn't a isn't copy literally speaking to the human's right brain? I do not know. I am really interested what you'll say about this because I believe that AI isn't at the point yet to really understand the emotional context of people. You do have a background in copy. That's why I'm curious. Maybe I'm giving it too much importance in regards of cold outreach. You know, I think I just have a, a background in like the first 30 seconds of a sale, <laughs> to be honest. I think that's like a big chunk of my background because of the door-to-door -door stuff. Um... But yes, copy does speak to the human brain. Yeah, uh, right brain, left brain. I don't know. I think that's pretty contentious. Yeah, you do know I, I have a degree in behavioral neuroscience. And so 
this is pretty contentious. It's pretty contentious. I don't know how to right brain, left brain. Honestly, some of that's all bullshit. All it really takes is some dude to like make a study that sounds nice with some, some outcome that sounds nice. And regardless of whether he or she retracts it in 10 years, like 99.9% .9 of the world will just see something that sounds nice and internalize it. You only use 10% of your brain, you know, sleep faster, right? Like, I don't know, so much, so much silly bullshit out there. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it here today because, uh, I am like really, really screwed up today. Um, sleep wise and then work time wise today i spent like three and a half hours doing community shit oh my god um i front loaded all of my briefs for the content that i'm making and i'll talk about the content in a second things went very well yesterday but uh i front loaded all the briefs and turns out so my, my day is i usually wake up and then i do my community management and so while my brain is slowly waking up and getting online uh, i will do like pretty low you know high volume but like low uh low risk stuff little by little right and it's like, it's easy. Like what's responding to comments? Like, duh, that's pretty easy. Like what's the risk that I totally screwed up while I'm tired? Not, not very much. Today, uh, I made the mistake of trying to start with my briefs for content, which I consider very high risk. And so I ended up spending like two hours just like touching up briefs for content outlines and stuff like that. And uh, I just was like banging my head against the wall because to be honest, my content was not very good. And uh, I did some team training and shit like that. And anyway, so when I finally doubled back to do the uh, uh, community management, I don't know. I just like my brain was not there. I just like juiced it all off the writing, which is honestly very, very energetically exhausting work. So anyway, I'm like four hours behind in my day and it's 4 PM and I have like another three hours of shit to do. That's a very long winded excuse. I know, but let us dive into uh brand stats and then I can run you through a very cool brand stat. So you guys don't know brand stats are an unbroken chain of me monitoring my daily growth on YouTube. You can see I started back on February the 1st and I was at 45,000 subs in the main channel. Now I'm at almost 188,000 it looks like according, according to this. Well check this shit out. 189,450. Do you guys see anything here? You guys see anything here at all? Look at the size of this number. We have to go back, literally, literally, we have to go all the way. Wow, this is longer than I thought. We have to go all the way back to May the 6th. How many days since May the 6th? We have to go back 121 days to find a day that I had more growth than I had today. 121 days. Now, if you guys remember, three or maybe four days ago, whenever the hell you guys watched this last, uh, anybody here that's, that's watched this, you know, re reliably and consistently, I said, and I guaranteed you, I said in a week, this number is going to go up and guess what? It went up. We are now at a 1% relative growth, at least yesterday. And I'm sure that's going to go down. But, um, basically what I'm trying to say is I did it. I got a viral video. Finally, uh, shit's going through the roof right now and it's great. Okay. All right. So what did I, what did I do? I published this video here, two videos, actually this video, what I'd learned instead of automation in 2026, where I basically made the same case that I've been making for the last like year and a half, really, which is that, um, you should focus on business skills. You shouldn't focus on like automation skills, uh, for the sake of automation, you should focus on business skills and learn automation skills as like a means to an end. Uh, you know, basically like take, take your business skills and just wrap them in automation skills and you'll be okay. Uh, and then the, the internet went crazy. Well, maybe the internet didn't go crazy, but, uh, my views definitely went crazy. And I chalked this up to a couple things. Um, I chalked this up to, uh, controversiality. Like if you think about it, I'm speaking to my niche, which I've just educated AI and automation as well as bus mostly business concepts, but like a lot of them follow me for, for AI and automation stuff. Right. And then I say, Hey, don't learn automation. Well, that's inherently very controversial, which is great. Right. But you know what, you know what that leads to, you know, what I'm realizing that uh, controversiality leads to. It leads to more comments. And you know what more comments lead to? Uh, the YouTube algorithm recommending my shit more. <laughs> so, yeah, man. We had this massive influx of people being like, what the hell are you saying, Nick? Nick, you're so wrong. And then, boom, look at the slope of that line go up. And then all my, uh, you know, like, audience, my main audience woke up. And they're like, hey, yeah, this is great content. I'm glad you made it. And then it stopped. And then we got pushed to, like, a different group. And then, boom, what the hell, Nick? What's wrong with you? And then it spiked up. And, like, we're just going to go through the phase two or three more times until I actually get pushed to, like, over a hundred thousand people in just a few days, dude, it's going to be crazy. So what did I learn here? I learned, wow, I made almost 500 bucks on just ad revenue from this. Jesus Christ. That's wild. 
Okay, anyway, this has it's just showing zero signs of slowing down, by the way. I learned uh, that making conscientious claims on the internet grows you. Who would have thought, huh? No, obviously, I, I freaking already knew this. Like, that's why 99% of all the people on Twitter and shit are just super controversial. But um, man, did that work way better than I thought. And you know what else I learned? Uh, if you go back to the video a couple days ago when I gave you my intentions and I told you I was going to grow, you can just do things. I just made all this shit up. Well, I didn't make it up, but <laughs> like I just made the idea up that I was going to publish a video again. And then I went in and then I created this big, long brief. Then I revised it. Then I spoke it on camera and it had some touch and go moments there because it was the first piece of like major content I published in a while. Gave it to my editor, you know, revised that because uh, we're trying a new style. I just like came up with this idea and I put my intention of the world. And then I told you guys that I was going to do it. And like two days later, now... I have 500 ish dollars in ad revenue and more subscriber growth than like 90%, 99% of other people in my space in a day, uh, which is sick. So yeah, man, I'm just amped. You can just do things. You can map some huge complicated plan or even a simple plan. You just formula, you know, formalize in your head and tell people about it and then go do it. If I didn't tell you guys about it, I probably would not have actually gone through and, and done it as much. Okay. All right. So now that that's done, I'm just done jerking myself off, I guess. Let's do um, Instagram, uh, Blast Up, which is my Instagram. Oh boy, do I have something else really cool to show you guys in the brand front. 335,067 subs. So we've gone up 1,200. Not, nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Daily Updates channel, which I should log. 118, which is unsurprising given the virality bump to the main one, right? Like, you know, if you think about it as this is my main channel, then everything else is just going to like grow from my main channel even if it's not necessarily the same channel. Like, this is a big spike. Well, check this out. Well, actually, there's two more two more things. So, not only did I make 1,600 subscribers <laughs> in the last, uh, from that video, just that video, but like, you know, 2,000 whatever subscribers collectively. Not only did I do that, check this out, man. I also added another 6,000 <laughs> in MRR. Do you guys know what this means? 6,000 bucks in MRR at my churn rate, which is about one person staying for between four to five months. Let's say 4.5 months right now. 4.5 times 6,000 means I generated 27,000 freaking dollars. I just, I just said, I'm going to do it. And then I had $27,000. Isn't that crazy? Oh, it's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, and, oh, and that's not all. <laughs> Check this out too. This channel just hit 6,422 subscribers. You want to see a video? That <laughs> Look at this. Look at the watch time we got on my Opal video. Google just dropped Opal AI. 256,000 views in a day. <laughs> Look at that shit, man. You can't make this up. Oh, man. It's the, it's the, it's the, I was about to say summer of Nick. It's not the summer of Nick. We're entering fall. <laughs> it's going to be a frigid freaking tundra up in Calgary pretty soon. But for one blissful moment before then, it is the summer of Nick. So anyway, just wanted to show you guys uh, how crazy the content's been in the last 24, 48 hours. If you guys uh, haven't watched that video, then please head over there and give it a quick comment. Thank you very much for all your support over the last 24 hours. Hopefully I was able to give you guys some value and not just a yap. Like I'm realizing half this video is me doing the Q and A. The other half of the video is me talking about how fucking awesome I am, which is like, okay, yeah, we get it. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll catch you on tomorrow's video and I'll do some, I'll do some more Q and A tomorrow too. Just busy. Cheers.